Maurice! Maurice? Maurice, is that you? Knock, knock. Who's there? Lettuce. Lettuce who? Lettuce in, and you'll see. Ha ha! Oh, I love knock knock jokes. Maurice, stop playing the fool and come and help me look for Jane. It's her turn to clean the house. Doris, why do we live in a house? Everyone lives in houses. What about the woman who lived in a shoe? Oh, yes. Mm. Let's sing the song. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread. Then she whipped them all round and sent them to bed. Ugh, fancy living in a shoe. Maybe the children got under her feet. Oh, Norris. <laughs> Let's sing it again. Oh, yes. There was an old woman who lived in a shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread. Then she whipped them all round and sent them to bed. <laughs> Now, where's Jane? She promised to bring a mop and duster to make the sitting room all tidy. She's probably forgotten. You know how absent-minded she is. Mm. Hello, you two. Oh, hello. I've been writing a story in my storybook. Do you want to hear it? Oh, yes. yes. It's called The Brand New Spell. Doris and Maurice are always telling me how forgetful I am. And I think they must be right. Just listen to what happened the other day. Doris and Morris went off to a special magician's meeting further down Magic Mountain. They wanted to learn all about some new spells. Now remember, Jane, said Morris as he was leaving, if you go out, take the key with you. Yes, added Doris, because we'll be home by tea time and we'd hate to be locked out. Don't worry, I said. I'll stay in all day and cook a special surprise tea. Bye, called Doris and Morris, and they rushed off with their spell books under their arms. Will you make scones, please, called Doris as she disappeared. I went into the kitchen and looked through my cookery book. There were so many delicious things to make. I made chocolate cake and sausage rolls, egg sandwiches and fruit jelly. I stirred and whisked and mixed and tasted... I like the tasting bit best of all. But I did so much tasting that the chocolate cake began to taste like sausage rolls and the egg sandwiches like fruit jelly. Oh, dear. I've eaten nearly all Morris and Doris's special tea, I said to myself. I'd better make something else before they come back. Then I remembered. Me remember something? Ha! <laughs> well, I did. Doris said that she wanted scones. Oh, dear, I said to myself. I've run out of flour. I'd better go and get some more. I ran straight out of the house to the Magic Mountain supermarket. And I bought a bag of flour, a pot of strawberry jam and some cream. Then I ran all the way back home. Now, who should have got home before me but Doris and Morris? They were sitting by the door. Hello, you two, I said. I've got a lovely surprise for you. I hope it's a food surprise, said Doris. Like scones. Never mind scones, said Morris. I hope you haven't forgotten the key. What? The key? Oh, no, I wailed. I, I did forget it. Now we're all locked out. I'd never seen Doris and Morris so cross. I'm so hungry, said Doris, clutching her tummy. It's learning all those new spells, groaned Morris. That always makes me hungry. Suddenly he sat up. Hey, Doris, he said. What about that spell we learned for opening doors? Let's try it and see what happens. Doris jumped up. Oh, yes, here it is. I wrote it in my spell book. They danced around and sang and waved their wands. Bing, bang, bong. A cough and a sneeze. Open sesame. If 
you please. We coughed and sneezed <coughs> and held our breath. Achoo. Nothing happened for ages. Then, suddenly, there was a click and the door swung open. Hooray! We shouted and rushed into the house. Doris and Morris ate sausage rolls while I made the scones. Yum, yum, said Doris. Well, you can certainly remember one thing, Jane, and that's how to cook. Maybe I should try and remember that spell for opening locked doors, I said. But try as I might, I couldn't remember the spell. Can you remember how it goes? Yes. Bing, bang, bong, a cough and a sneeze. Open sesame if you please. <laughs> oh dear, that spell always makes me sneeze. It's not the spell that makes you sneeze, Morris. It's the dust in here. Jane still hasn't done her share of the cleaning. Now don't fuss, Doris. The house looks very nice as it is. I suppose if we had a new house, it would be all sparkling clean. Could you build us one, Morris? No, but Denise could. Listen to her song. I'm going to build a little house with a chimney tall, a sloping roof and a garden Tiny windows, you can peep inside. I'm going to build a table big enough for two. Two little chairs, one for me, one for you. Sounds lovely. Morris, what would you build a house with? Oh, I don't know, Doris. I'd probably try and make up a spell. But supposing you couldn't? Well, then I'd make a house out of um, bricks, I suppose, and sticks and straw. Bricks and sticks and straw? Mm. Oh, that's what the three little pigs made their houses from. Let's listen to the story. The Three Little Pigs Once upon a time, there were three little pigs who lived with their mother. But they grew and they grew, and as they grew, the house seemed smaller and smaller. The time has come for you to leave home and seek your fortunes, said their mother. But beware of the big bad wolf. The first little pig set off at once. He had not gone far down the road when he met a man carrying a bundle of straw. Excuse me, sir. I would like to build a house, he said. Will you sell me your bundle of straw? The man sold the little pig his straw, and the little pig built his house. And a very cosy house it was. The little pig went in and shut the door. The second little pig trotted quite a way down the road before he met a man with a pile of sticks. Excuse me, sir. I would like to build a house, he said. Will you sell me your pile of sticks? <coughs> the man sold the little pig his sticks, and the little pig built his house. And a very pretty house it was. The little pig went in and shut the door. The third little pig went far down the road before he met a man pushing a barrow full of bricks. Excuse me, sir. <coughs> I would like to build a house, <coughs> he said. Will you sell me your barrow of bricks? The man sold the little pig his bricks, and the little pig built his house. And a very strong house it was. The little pig went in and shut the door. 
Now the big bad wolf lived in the woods nearby, and he was always hungry. When he came across the straw house, his long nose told him there was a fat little pig inside. He knocked at the door. Little pig, little pig, let me come in. No, not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. I won't let you in," said the little pig. "Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down," snarled the wolf. And he huffed, and he puffed, and he blew. The little straw house blew down in a heap, and the first little pig ran and ran and ran all the way to the stick house. The big bad wolf chased after him. When the wolf reached the stick house, his long nose told him there were two fat little pigs inside. He knocked at the door. Little pigs, little pigs, let me come in. No, not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. I won't let you in," said the second little pig. "Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down," snarled the wolf. And he huffed, and he puffed, and he puffed, and he huffed, and he blew. The little stick house tottered and fell down in a heap. And the two little pigs ran and ran and ran all the way to the brick house. The big bad wolf chased after them. When the wolf reached the brick house, his long nose told him that there were three fat little pigs inside. He knocked at the door. Little pigs, little pigs, let me come in. No, not by the hair on my chinny chin chin. I won't let you in," said the third little pig. "Then I'll huff, and I'll puff, and I'll blow your house down," snarled the wolf. And he huffed, and he puffed, and he puffed, and he huffed, and he huffed, and he puffed, and he blew. But though he blew all morning and he blew all afternoon, he could not blow down the brick house. When the big bad wolf heard the three little pigs laughing, he got so angry that he shouted, "I'll eat one of you for breakfast, and one of you for dinner, and one of you for tea. I'm coming down the chimney to get you." When he heard this, the third little pig filled his cooking pot with hot water and stood it in the fireplace, right under the chimney. There was a scrabbling and a scratching on the roof. There was a scrabbling and a scratching in the chimney. I'm coming to get you," called the big bad wolf. Then down the chimney came the big bad wolf, and he landed splash right in the cooking pot. Clang went the heavy lid. Sizzle went the fire, and that was the end of the big bad wolf. Jane, Jane, oh, where is she? <sighs> I just have to dust the parlour myself. The parlour? That's the same thing as the sitting room or the front room or the lounge. Yes, but the spider in my poem has a parlour. Listen, I'll be the spider and you can be the fly.、Oh. The poem's called "The Spider and the Fly." Won't you walk into my parlor? Said the spider to the fly. It's the prettiest little parlor you ever did espy. And the way into my parlor is up a winding stair. And I have many pretty things to show you when we're there. Oh no, no! Said the little fly. To ask me is in vain. For who goes up the winding stair will not come down again. Doris, Doris. Yes, Morris. Knock, knock. Are you being silly again? No, go on. Knock, knock. Who's there? Ken. Ken, who? Can I come in? <laughs> oh, if you're going to do knock, knock jokes, I'm going to sing. I don't mind. In fact, I'll even join in. Goosey, goosey, gander, with a 
whither shall I wander? Upstairs and downstairs and in my lady's chamber. There I met an old man who would not say his prayers. So I took him by the left leg and threw him down the stairs. Ah, oh, poor old man, being thrown down the stairs. It's only a nursery rhyme, Maurice. Come on, sing. Goosey, goosey, gander, whither shall I wander? Upstairs and downstairs and in my lady's chamber. There I met an old man who would not say his prayers. So I took him by the left leg and threw him down the stairs. that noise? It's the old clock in the hall, silly. Four. Four. Tea time. Hooray. <laughs> well, if it's tea time, it must be time for a story. Look, here's Denise. Will you tell us a tea time story, please? Of course I will. This story's got a clock in it, just like the one in your hall. It's called The Kind-Hearted Mouse. There was once a sad little house that stood all by itself in the middle of nowhere. Once it had been a very happy little place with birds singing in the trees all around. But now it was quiet and empty. Inside the furniture had all gone, all except a clock on the wall that didn't tick anymore and a frying pan hanging by the cold, empty fireplace and a few sticks in the hearth that someone had left there. Now one day, a little mouse came scurrying along, looking for berries to eat. When she came to the sad little house, she stood still to look at it. This is a very pretty little place, said the mouse. I must see what it looks like inside. And she crept under the door for a closer look. Goodness me, she cried. Isn't it quiet? Then because she was a kind little mouse, she thought, I must try to cheer the little house up. And the way to do that is to make happy noises. The little mouse looked at the clock hanging on the wall. It had a pendulum underneath it, but the pendulum was not moving, for the clock had stopped. So the little mouse jumped up and caught hold of it and began to swing it to and fro. The old clock wheezed and grunted and then in a very hoarse voice it began to say Tick! Tock! Tick! Good! said the little mouse. Now, what else can I do? She took one of the sticks of wood and stood in front of the frying pan. She raised the stick and then hit the pan with it and it made a lovely bong. said the clock. Bing, bong, bing, bong, shouted the frying pan. What a happy little song, sang the little mouse. Two blackbirds came flying past the house and they settled on the roof. Do you hear that lovely music, said Mr Blackbird. It makes me want to sing too. He threw back his head and began to sing. And soon all the other birds came flying across the field to join in. Twitter, 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 tweet! Chirp, 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 cheep! Woot, woo! Twit, woo! Ah, ah! <coughs> Suddenly, a little old man came wandering along into the middle of nowhere. He had all his belongings in a big bag and he was wondering where he could find somewhere to sleep that night. Then he stood still. Just in front of him was a little old house, and coming out of the little old house was the prettiest song he had ever heard. Tick, tock, tick, tock, bing, bong, bing, bong. What a happy little song, and all around him the birds sang. What a lovely, happy house, said the little old man. I think I would like to live here forever and ever. Then he pushed open the door and went in. He drew the sticks together and made a fire. He took out his little kettle and his little teapot and made a pot of tea. 
he fried his bread and bacon in the little frying pan, and afterwards he threw breadcrumbs to the birds and bacon rind to the little mouse. And they all lived together in the happy little house. The house is so noisy today. Hey, Doris, there's a sort of ping-pong noise going on. What is it? It's a lovely sound for saying rhymes to. Listen. Let's make a doll's house. Let's make a doll's house out of a box and put things inside it in case Dolly knocks. Look in the corner. Her lamp has a shade. With the cap of a toothpaste, it's easily made. Your doll needs a mirror to look at her face. So make one from tin foil and put it in place. A large empty matchbox will serve as her bed. A few folded tissues will make the bed spread. Choose some more tissues in colours so bright. Her house needs some curtains for when it is night. The lid from an aerosol looks like a table. Make stools out of cotton reels. Anyone's able. Now look at your doll's house. Isn't it jolly? Ready and waiting for you and your dolly. Doris, I've been looking all around the bathroom and I can't find the top of the toothpaste. Have you seen it? Well, uh, yes, I put it in my doll's house to make a lampshade. A lampshade out of a toothpaste top? Sometimes I think you're as daft as I am. I'm not daft. I'm just very good at using my imagination. Look, it makes a very nice lampshade for my dolly. Well, at least you're not still carrying on about cleaning the house. That's because I want to hear Carol's story. And that's about cleaning, spring cleaning. What's the story called, Carol? It's called Bubble and Squeak Surprise. One day, the two starfish, Bubble and Squeak, were helping their mother to do the spring cleaning. When we've finished, she said, there'll be a surprise for you. So Bubble and Squeak worked very hard making the windows shine. Look, here's Slippy the eel, said Bubble. Hello, Slippy said Squeak, giggling. Why don't you help us with the spring cleaning? Slippy had a brush tied to his head. He wriggled up and down the chimney and swept out all the sand. There was a knock at the door. It was Carlo the crab and Ollie the octopus. They had brought some wallpaper. In here, please, said Mother. Oh, squeak, said Bubble. It's for our bedroom. That's our surprise. Squeak stayed to watch. Carlo cut out the wallpaper with his claws and Ollie pasted it with his long arms. Then he put the wallpaper on the wall three pieces at a time. He worked so fast that the job was soon done. Thank you, said Mother as the workers left. Now we can have lunch. Bubble, where on earth has Squeak gone? Squeak was not in the lounge, or the kitchen, or the bathroom. Then Bubble heard a funny scratching sound in the bedroom. Squeak was stuck behind the wallpaper. Phew, he said. I thought you'd never hear me. Bubble washed the paste off Squeak while Mother called Carlo and Ollie back. Next time... She said, just wallpaper the walls. Morris, have you seen the top of the toothpaste? Yes, Jane. It's in Doris's doll's house, pretending to be a lampshade. Jolly silly, if you ask me. It's not silly. Yes, it is. No, it isn't. It is. isn't. Please don't argue, you two. Ever since I've been here on Magic Mountain, you've been such good friends. In fact, I've made up a little song to thank you. Would you like to hear it? Oh, yes, please. Well, will you kiss and make up with Morris? Yes, all right. Morris? Yes, I'll kiss and make up. That's better. Now, here's my song. 
Everyone calls me Jane. Digby and Leroy and Morris. And I haven't got a magic brain like Trevor and Dottie and Doris. But I love the people on Magic Mountain and I know that they love me. When I'm home with the people on Magic Mountain, we sing a song that goes... One, two, three. We love living on Magic Mountain. There isn't any worry and there isn't any fuss. We love living on Magic Mountain. Magic Mountain's home for us. We love living on Magic Mountain. There isn't any worry and there isn't any fuss. We love living on Magic Mountain. Magic Mountain's home for us. We love living on Magic Mountain. There isn't any worry and there isn't any fuss. We love living on Magic Mountain. Magic Mountain's home for us. <laughs> <laughs> <Yay>! <laughs>